Here's my workflow for making videos. I make client work, I make YouTube videos, uh, I make Instagram, I make I make all the things. I make all the videos that go on the internet, all right? Couldn't really decide exactly how I wanted to talk about shooting. I mostly want to talk about editing, like post-production workflow, but I do feel like I would be remiss if I did not talk about scripting, kind of pre-production, production first, since it's supposed to be my entire workflow. So let's dive into that first, but definitely stick around for the post-production, which I think you're gonna get a bunch of value from. Video sponsored by Squarespace. Okay, when it comes to ideation for a video, that's where we start, right? I have millions of ideas for videos. I have never lacked ideas for videos, especially when I was vlogging. Just felt like I could make videos about anything. And in a lot of ways, especially if you're just starting out, I really think that's the kind of path you should follow, is make videos about kind of whatever you wanna make videos about. Don't worry too much about the niche from the get-go, just like learn it as you go. If you feel like starting at a more advanced level, there's some risk there because you might end up not liking or not being good at making videos about thing that you decide to make videos about. But if you think that's for you, by all means start there. Ideation on video topics, you know, a tool that we have now, ChatGPT, is really great for ideating video topics. It was trained on the internet. It knows sort of internet speak, right? And this is GPT-4 that I'm talking about. First I say, hey, I want to make videos about how to edit faster. Give me 50 video ideas on how to edit faster. It's going to kick out a list, right? Then look at each one of those ideas and honestly just pick one or two or three or four that are interesting to you and make those first. Or don't make any of the videos on that list. Just looking at the list sometimes, getting started with the process is gonna help your brain to kind of unlock the idea that you want to actually make a video about. There's a million and one ideas out there. At some point you gotta pick one and you gotta decide to make that video. So decide, pick it and decide. All right, maybe it's a vlog, maybe it's just a family video recap. I don't know what it is, but pick it and decide to make it. Other tip I'll give for ideation is using the notes app on your phone or if you're old school keeping a handwritten notepad in your pocket jotting down ideas that you have throughout the day it's crazy when ideas pop into your head and you want to be able to capture all of them. When it comes to sort of preparing for a video, there's two ways to do it, in my opinion. First, you need to have information about the topic the video's on. Maybe that comes from life experience, maybe that comes from research, but once you have the information in your head or loosely on some document somewhere, you have the choice between either scripting a video or outlining a video. And at this point in my life, I have made thousands of videos featuring probably hundreds of people who had to perform on camera, who had to talk on camera, and I will say the best videos I've made, whether that's documentary, commercial, vlog style, uh, like high level production, low level production, and everything in between. The best videos, the ones where the story comes across, where the vibe, where you feel the mood, you feel the feeling that I was trying to get you to feel in the video. Those videos came from people that felt comfortable on camera, that weren't afraid to mess up. Maybe, maybe they did mess up, right? But they weren't afraid to mess up. They were comfortable, they were conversational. So for that reason, I almost only ever outline my videos. If possible, make it conversational, make yourself or your subject comfortable in front of the camera, make it feel like a conversation. Whether it's with the lens, maybe they're looking off camera, maybe they're speaking to a producer or something like that. That's where I've seen the best results with, with the videos that I've made. When it comes to shooting B-roll for your videos, you know, I like to say think in threes, maybe a wide shot, establishing shot, more medium shot to give you a little bit of information, and then a close-up or close-ups. That's kind of an easy way to do it. There's no rules when it comes to B-roll. Just give people stuff that's visually interesting to look at. I could make an entire course membership program about how to shoot B-roll. Maybe I will make that at some point. But for now, just get your camera out and, and, and capture visually stunning things and put them in videos as b-roll okay for now okay the editing the post-production this is where I ran into some of the most time-consuming elements of the video production process whether that, again whether that was in my business whether that was for myself and the stuff that I've learned even over the last five years to speed up the post-production process has just been like invaluable to me. So let's dive into that. First, let me tell you about Squarespace sponsor this video. With Squarespace's new Fluid Engine, making a fantastic, very professional website has never been easier. You start with a professional template designed, coded by a professional, and then you modify it however you like using this fantastic new drag and drop UI. Super crucial, your site is going to work on desktop and mobile because you know everybody's using their phones to look at sites now. You can accept appointments on your site, offer private workshops, 
workshops, coaching calls, consultations, all right within your website. The analytics suite is fantastic for when you wanna make some tweaks, see what's working, see what's not. If you wanna try it out, go to squarespace.com slash Cody Warner, get a free trial, and then when you're ready to buy, use the code Cody Warner to get 10% off your first purchase of a domain or website. All right, let me show you my exact workflow for editing as fast as you possibly can from beginning to end. So I recorded my video, I'm gonna open up ReCut. ReCut's open, click to browse, open. That pops open, ReCut analyzes it, it cuts it down from 13 minutes and 37 seconds down to seven minutes and eight seconds. Come over here, hit export, I'll change that to Final Cut Pro because that's what I'm editing in. That It happens literally that quick. Open up Final Cut, go to new library, make that. Now I'm gonna go back to where I saved my XML and just double click on it. That's gonna make Final Cut ask me like, where do you wanna add this to as a project? I'll click on speed editing workflow, hit choose, and then bam, when I double click on this, it's just a project. Cuts are all already in there. The way that I record everything is I keep on trying it until I get it right. I'm just gonna be skipping through now to the last time that I attempt to say something because I know that that is my best take of the thing. Now I'm gonna be using my keyboard shortcuts for top and tail editing. You can watch the video about top and tail editing right up here if you want to. But the actions I'm using are trim start, trim end and blade, that's what I'm using. Regardless of what keys you set those to, that's what you're gonna wanna use. At this stage in the game, I'm not worrying about any audio blips or like, you know, any jump cuts or anything. If I need to go back and smooth out some of these cuts, I will, but I'm just getting the main timeline of the video down. Other thing I should say is I don't watch this in real time. I watch it in at least 1.5X, I believe. Keyboard shortcuts for that are J, K, and L. J takes you backwards. K pauses and L takes you forwards. If you hit L again, it's gonna take you forward faster. If you hit L again, it's gonna take you even faster. Never edit talking head A roll at real time. Like, it's just not worth it. Once you get later in the process, you can watch it real time, you can really fine tune, right? But on your first raw cut, you gotta be going faster than real time. Okay, so that took, I believe, 14 minutes to cut that eight minutes that recut gave me down to two minutes, which is exactly how long this video is supposed to be. The last thing to do is go back and add some J cuts and L cuts just to make sure that this audio is flowing seamlessly. So you can actually just do this with the waveform in a lot of cases. You can see he here, like I, my voice starts to fade off there and then it starts to come in here. If I hit H, on my keyboard, it is going to expand the audio components, and then I'm just gonna slide that video component over so that the audio from the second clip kind of starts to play as the audio from the first clip is finishing. And I'm gonna do that anytime there's a pop or any sort of weird audio happening in this timeline. 